Movie Sucktastic is a podcast about bad movies and the people that love them. But it's more than just a podcast, it's an also an online presence. If you want to know more about Movie Sucktastic or want to become a part of Movie Sucktastic, you can find us on Facebook, you can find us on Twitter, at Movie Sucktastic, you can find our blog at boothreviews.blogspot.com, or if you want to give your own reviews that we might use on the show, you can go to reviews.moviesucktastic.com and check out our, our own little lunch.com community for Movie Sucktastic. Check us out and become a part of the show because the only thing more fun than a bad movie is sharing it. When slithering horror threatens, when assassins narrow their sights, when terrorists strike, Killers fill the sky. When the green wigglies are coming to get you. When you're all doomed to die a horrible death. We're all doomed to die a horrible death. When you're in that kind of trouble, who do you call on? No fear. Doc Savage is here. Well, now, you handle the documents. Yes. Is there anything you can remember about them? Anything that might help me find that land which was given to my father? It is very strange, senor. The deed was signed by the chief of the Quetzimal tribe. But there is no Quetzimal tribe. Can you believe this? Yes. Yes, I think I can. My father got there. Somehow I must get there too. But it may take days to get there. You've brought us this far, Mona, and I thank you. I love you. Mona, you're a brick. <laughs> Champagne? No, thank you. Uh, perhaps something a bit more potent to... I'll have a Coke, please. He's noble and strong. He's got a brain, a super brain that will not rest. He'll right every wrong. Let us all try and help to sue the savage press. Here it is. The age of the world. Below, in the valley of the vanish, live the Quetzamals. There is no way down. It's time to proceed. Stay in your seat and hope you'll beat this evil force. You are listening to Movie Sucktastic. Dude, dude, whoa, dude, dude, no! Oh! 
And we're back. We are back. Where, where have you been? You know, I, uh, I try. I try to get, like, a 30-second, like, TV spot. You know? <laughs> I do. And there Not was... This. No. No. The only one that I found was a TV spot for TV. Not a theatrical TV spot. Right. I didn't want that. So the only thing I could find was like this super long three minute trailer. I'm like, you well, don't you don't have a minute, minute and a half. It's gotta be three minutes. It's basically the whole movie. We don't have to review this thing. We're done. <laughs> well <laughs> Well, we're we're finally here to this part then. Welcome to Movie Sucktastic. Uh, the <laughs> podcast that really just doesn't know when to shut the fuck up. Yeah. Uh, that is Joey, uh, our, Hi. Uh, and and I am. Don't if if you're watching our video podcast, don't panic. I am not a protester from the Capitol building. Uh, this is just lovable Scott. This is lovable Scott. Yeah, don't that's, don't don't, that's all don't it let is. the uh, don't let the beard scare you. Yeah, that's right. You know, it's, it's coming off soon. Don't worry. It's interesting. Like if it's coming off that soon, it's only going to be around for us, maybe three or four episodes. Oh, I, I'm having mugs made with with. With this on one side and me like fully shaven on the other side. <laughs> oh yeah, that's oh, a good yeah. idea. I like that. Before coffee, after coffee, you know. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, you've been growing the beard for ten months, and we've been gone that long. Um, I, we've been gone a few, a few couple a few months. I, yeah, you're right. Yeah. No, the, everything is time stamped. There, there's no sugar coating this. We, we've been <laughs> yeah. gone that long. <laughs> Well, a lot of shit's been happening. No, well, no. I mean, like, you're down in Texas. I know that you've been down there, but it's we're Family all working from Central. home. Yeah, that's right. We're all working from home. Uh, the world is crazy. Um, we kind of took some time off to just kind of figure things out, you know. So. Not about this. No, no, <laughs> Anything the, else. no. The, the, just the, this is exactly the same as it was ten months ago. Yeah. <laughs> We we, we we did our first episode since March last week, and I had the exact same audio problems. I actually had worse audio problems. <laughs> well, I was having video problems, you know, until I, you know, changed some things around. So, yeah. we're, but we're, the key is, though, is that we're never leaving. No, no. Why? Um, it's so now, easy and fun. One, one thing is changing, though. I do want to ha like start broaching some su subjects to talk about briefly before we review our films, just about the whole concept of bad movies. And and one thing I wanted to ask you today, Joe, is is uh, you know based on what we've been doing for the past ten years. Oh my God, this is our eleventh year. Oh Jesus! It will be. It'll be eleven years. This our first episode ever was August of two thousand nine. But while we were figuring out how to do this the way we wanted to, mm -hmm. show structure, you know, what we were going to review, things like that, the very next episode where we actually kicked this thing off officially, where we were doing episodes every week, was October. So I, I mean, like, you I was know, on a point too. yeah. So it's like pick yeah. your month. Anywhere between August and October will be our 11th anniversary. We totally you know bypassed like our 10th anniversary. We were going to do something big, and we were like. Maybe we, you know, but I mean, because, you know, COVID hit and all that. Or no, COVID didn't hit. It was just, we were heading into winter and then COVID hit. And it was like, well, we're definitely not doing that now. Yeah. And, but so. what, what, I, what I like, Joey, is the fact that I was able to say, you know, back when I was on employment and your first response was, wasn't which time? You know, it makes me feel good. Like I've I've accomplished something in my life. Why, why would I do that? I wouldn't do that. No, it's, no, but you know what I'm saying. I, I know I what like you're saying. That that's not. A, it wasn't an option. That's what I. That's what makes me feel good. Not yeah. not necessarily you. I'm just give, trying to give you some credit. Just oh, take the credit. Okay. I'm, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah. So um, we we came right back to the format we dropped off before the whole COVID uh, nightmare scenario yeah. that we're s still currently in, and um, which was reviewing all the films we had the stomach to review per year starting with my birthday since i'm the older of the two of us and we're still in 1975 and today we're episode uh we're recording <laughs> okay this, this this stuff is good <laughs> um 119 this, proof oh yeah this episode we are 
um, reviewing Doc Savage, The Man of Bronze. The Man of Bronze. Uh, yes, uh, this is actually now, your challenge uh, to me. Correct. This was a film that I, my father enjoys immensely. Uh, he was going to record a podcast with us to record, uh, to review it, but uh, I wasn't able to get in touch with him. He's busy right now. Uh, but I just want to mention him. He's the reason I've, I ever saw this film in the first place. He's also the reason that as a child I was reading Doc Savage novels. Oh, the serials. Yeah. Yeah. And it's also a reason why, even as a kid, I've never liked this film. <laughs> uh, but, you know, it's all his influence. And uh, um, so what, what I wanted to ask you, and we, we can use tonight's episode as kind of a guideline, just, just going off the past 11 years and uh, us actually devoting time and energy to, to discussing bad films and not just in a snarky way, but eventually actually getting a kind of a philosophy about it. What would you say are some of the major main indicators that you would qualify as what makes a bad film? Well, this movie has it all. I, I mean, well, like this movie has some specific ones. The, yeah, the, no, I mean, this, this is like the like the prototype. Okay, uh, everything. Me, I, I would say the Hollywood prototype. Well, yeah, it's a Warner Brothers film, and. You know, they're actually trying to remake this, which I think is a smart idea, actually. Yeah, definitely. I'm all for it. <laughs> I think The Rock is supposed to play Doc Savage. Perfect. L- last I heard. So Perfect. That. Um, but uh, the, you know, saying the acting is one thing. The overacting definitely puts this in that uh, qualifying all right, uh, bad yeah. film. The but. poor special effects... The um, the bad guys. I mean, there's a scene where one of the bad guys just starts laughing. <laughs> <laughs> like, and it's not a joke. You know, it's not, you know, Dr. Evil from Austin Powers. Like, when, they, when, it, when that's done in that movie, it's an overacting, you know, over-the-top laugh because he's that evil. This guy does it. Well, that's, it's not a joke. It's, also, it's, that, it's what right. it is. First of all, I just want to say you're comparing a, a parody. No, well, but what film I'm what I'm getting at, so it's a different kind. But I, listen, I there's been plenty of movies made where the evil villain laughs, and it's right. you know it's not like this. Yeah. Now, I, I think a number of your statements can boil down into one main issue that I have with the film that I that I think I would qualify as a standard for what makes a bad movie, uh, and that is when you get these movies that tr- that go try to capitalize on a previous trademark and in this case would be the doc savage novels from the 30s but as we saw in the early days of superhero movies like with uh batman or i'm sure you can think of other ones off the top of your head uh and other similar similar um sure. even take flash gordon also a serial yeah uh, like and this also that, same that, time tr- though, timeline even though flash gordon works 100 percent uh, <laughs> yeah. I, the whole the whole idea is that Hollywood will get these these uh, properties and, and, and specifically for Doc Savage like okay here's a series of pulp novels that ran in like the 30s 40s 50s I, I forget how long the run was um, and uh, it has a huge base all we have to do is make a film of it however even though the novels had a strict uh, almost strictly adult content uh, you know based on today's standards not on the 30s and even though there's it, the, anybody that was into Doc Savage when he was out was already in their middle ages at least, let's dumb this down to make sure we can get kids in the seats and make it like a goofy uh, kid movie for uh, oh your average grade schooler. This movie's rated G, by the way. That's what I'm saying. So you know, although I don't know how they didn't have PG-13 back then, so it's, it's, it was either you know R or G. It's 75. They had PG. I don't know how right. this got a, did not get a PG. Well, because they didn't want a PG. There's an again. Because it's a, what did they grease again, some palms? Because you know, even Jaws is PG. Well, that's why. That's what I'm saying. It's like when Bat when they first took Batman, it says, okay, this property's been around for so long that the people that are that originally came up with it are already like senior citizens. Let's uh, let's make sure we aim this to the youngest audience possible because this isn't for adults. Right. 
So, and they do the same thing with here. Now, I've read, uh, I, I'm not an expert on Doc Savage, but I have read several of the novels, and actually I started rereading them recently. I just read I, uh, the first two. I've never actually seen this film until the, till now, till we reviewed it. Were you it. familiar with Doc Savage? Yeah, I was completely familiar with it, but okay. I, I've never gone out of my way to watch this thing. Now, I watched it with Holly, and the first thing she asked me was, isn't this based on comic books? I was like, no. There are comics, yes, but I had to explain the history. She was like, I don't care. So... <laughs> And and I found myself explaining things now and then, like, oh yeah, this is supposed to, like Fortress of Solitude, is like, and I said, yeah, I think Superman kind of stole it from this. She <laughs> says, well, no, Superman was out before 1975. It's like, no, no, there's no, a background, there's no. a history, <laughs> you know, all this stuff. But uh, it, it explaining this to her just really underlined the fact that like the now even the the base knowledge that I have of Doc Savage, is like just oh let's for example the body count of this film, I just read. Doc Savage, the second Doc Savage that was ever published, because there's the chronological and then there's the actual order. Um, he kills like five guys in the second chapter. <laughs> Barehanded. Just breaking necks, twisting, you know, just throwing people through brick walls. He, he, did, he, he, he has the whole rehabilitation thing, but when it comes down to fighting, he takes no prisoners. Well, I mean, they made a point uh, later in this film that he said, Doc Savage doesn't believe in murder. Right. <laughs> But and he he doesn't, and they they say that in the books while he's killing a bunch of guys, <laughs> because they didn't give him a choice. If he has the choice, he'll take them into custody. But if there's no choice, you, you're going down. And it's there's a lot of fucking death, you know. It, and it's just it's weird. It's like that's the whole basis of the series. How do you get to this? And it's because it was it, you've got the novels that are filtered through the comic books that are filtered through just the uh, the marketing people, and then you filter it through corporate, and then they hired a screenwriter and say, do this. Oh, by the way, we don't have a lot of money for the soundtrack, so maybe you can find some pu public domain shit. Right. So, I mean, so I got sidetracked, but <laughs> what I'm saying is is just the, the inability to, to capture the tone of a property that already exists is usually a huge indicator of a bad movie. I agree with that. Sure. Yeah. A lot of the times it'll be kids stuff where they, they like, Oh, like, like when they made, um, uh, the, uh, uh, they did, um, fuck the puppets, Thunderbirds, they did Thunderbirds. Oh, decided right. It would, would lie people and not puppets. Yeah. What the, that had Bill did Paxton you? in that one, right? Yeah. Yeah. Did, did you watch the show? Do you know why people still watch the show? It's not because of the lack of puppets, you know. So I mean, and I'm, but I do think like, again, and a lot of it's all nostalgia stuff too. It's like they, you know, I, I, I know I've heard at some point people complained of like a Pokemon movie like changing the mythos or something weird like that. I don't get involved because those people are crazy. But well, yeah, you, something uh, happened in the second season of The Mandalorian where uh, that baby Yoda was okay was eating. I for, even forget the species, but it was eating its eggs. And the very next day, it was like, and it's one of those things that you see where it, uh, it, it's along the lines of, oh, this actor used to look like this, and you won't believe what they look like now. It was along those lines, and it's basically just garbage clickbait. And all right. it, it's just the same thing. I got to stop you, though, because st all Star Wars fans are insane. <laughs> and so it's not a fair comparison. My my only example of that is uh, the second Star Wars series. Ah, like, like the, the the first. What was the first one? Um, well, the first one was Star Phantom Wars Menace. Empire. Oh, you mean no, no. episodic wise? Yeah, yeah, it was Phantom Menace, Attack Phantom of the Menace Clones, Revenge of the Sith. Oh, Phantom Menace, com Menace comes out. The big cry. This is not like the old Star Wars. <laughs> then the new. Then a New Hope comes out. Or what, what was the new? What was uh, whatever? No, it was Attack of the Clones. Was the second one? No, the third series. The first of the third series. Oh, that was, um, you had... Force Awakens. F uh, Force Awakens? That was... I don't care. The first one. Force, Wake so, Force Awakens, yeah. Anyway, all right. Force Awakens. Yeah, so so when Phantom Menace comes out, oh, this is not like the Star Wars I loved. Then when Force Awakens comes out, this is too much like the Star Wars I love. <laughs> yeah. Fuck all it, of them. They were just, None of them yeah. make it. They're all insane. I don't care what the argument is stop but uh but so it's a bad comparison that's all i'm saying but but, but yeah you, a lot of these films 
they're 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 specifically cater trying. They're just did saying. You say my, did you just say want. my comparison was bad? No, no. I, yeah, yeah. Definitely. <laughs> you know I love can't, you. <laughs> it's the only reason why I let you get away with something like that. Well, it's true. You can't compare the Star Wars mentality with like regular film mentality because it's a whole different ball game of crazy. I was just going with one scene and them complaining it's, about it. I was I was comparing one set of people complaining to another set of people complaining. Right, but the problem was one set of those people were Star Wars fans. <laughs> and that's like that that's like comparing normal hockey fans to devil's hockey fans. Wow. <laughs> and and by the way, mean. by the way, I have to record tonight's game. Hockey is officially <laughs> back. Today is the first ho- devil's hockey game, and I'm recording it so I can do this. Uh, all I know is I haven't I'm, watched hockey in 10 months. The other day, I'm scrolling through a, a Facebook feed of nothing but politics and death in politics, in civil rights, and politics. And then I cross Joey with a picture of like a hockey play and just this. <laughs> so what the fuck is this? <laughs> Who's watching hockey? What the fuck? <laughs> I didn't even comment on it because I, I, nothing I can say can express the disgust I have right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, that's all I was saying. It's just like Star Wars fans, you're not going to please no matter what. But it's a good example. But it's, but okay. I think uh, thanks. Uh, uh, well, unlike, <laughs> but Star Wars is different also because that is a uh, a franchise that has spanned this this time period. What I'm saying is these guys they take something that already exists as a fan base and says, okay, we're going to make a, something for this fan base. But the first thing we want to do is change it in such a way that the fan base that we're aiming for is going to be the most vocally angry with us. <laughs> yeah. It, 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 it's insane how many times it happens. And this is a perfect example of this, of just try uh, somewhere between the idea of capitalizing on a previous franchise and capitalizing on it. Somebody fucks everything up by saying, yeah, the one thing we want to do is make sure that these people aren't the ones we're aiming for because that's not our audience. Yeah. And this movie is cringe inducingly bad. Uh, there, no, it is. There, there is a lot of scenes that go on where it's like, Oh, you like you you feel the cringe. It's just what the overacting said, and well, see when you say overacting yeah. though, it's scripted overacting. There's because they're going for this kind of '30s newsreel, uh, which again, these were pulp novels. They weren't they weren't like the old DC's Batman serials. Right. Not well, DC, yeah, but the old Batman serials. Is that these aren't like the old serials from that time period? These were pulp novels, and they kind of treat it. With the overacting, like it's just like the same way that you would if you were re- redoing the old serials. You know what this? It kind of reminded me of. It kind of reminded me of Anchorman, The Legend of Ron Burgundy, like the way they go about. I mean, that movie is obviously it's a parody, and the overacting in that is done on purpose as well. But I, I, do, I don't know, man. How about this? I, I don't Compared feel like I don't feel like the overacting was scripted here. I feel like it's on a perfect example. It's in the script, but it's just I don't know. I think when they did it, they didn't think like the lawyer, the Harvard yeah. lawyer. It's like I think he's playing it straight. I I have two comparisons that are better than yours. Do okay. you want to hear them? Yes. The Phantom and the Spirit. <laughs> the Phantom or, with Alec Baldwin, the Spirit and, with Samuel L. Jackson. Let's, let's throw the Rocketeer in for the win. Sure. I was but, actually just talking about the Rocketeer the other day. They're all, but they all did the same thing. They they said, okay, they're from this time period, so every all the acting has to be campy because that time period was campy, even though most of the source material uh, that they're 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 um, they're working from that they're that they're working from wasn't campy. Because that's the mindset of that time period with action stuff. Says, oh yeah, it's like the Rocketeer stuff, and, and even the Rocketeer they 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 missed the mark just because of, well, it wasn't Disney. the same kind of campy with that. <laughs> but then with the Phantom and it's like, the, the, really, this is not. Did you ever read a Phantom comic book? Did you listen to the radio show? It's not this goofy. <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? It's just, it, it's again, it's that mindset of okay, this stuff we actually we obviously have to aim for kids. Who said that? You know, Chris made me go see The Phantom in a theater. You want to hear what's worse? <laughs> sure. 
I went to see it at a drive-in with Doug. Oh, that is worse. Double feature with clear and present danger. <laughs> Guess which one I fell asleep during. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, the Phantom. I, I wake up. It's like, why, why, why is there a bomb in the elevator shaft? I missed something. <laughs> What's going on? That's ridiculous. Doug, why is your head in my crotch? That is not true. That is partially true. Yeah, partially. All right. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god yeah at least at least well, i only had to go see one movie and i got to go to a diner first <laughs> and you know popcorn and soda and candy and all that stuff that was fun but oh my god the fan as long as they give so you candy just do whatever they ask yeah just can't tell my parents yeah no well you know Phantom. It's not the conversation you want. Phantom is so uh, fucking bad. Yeah, so I I, th I think like with Doc Savage, I th I think it's very uh, a very textbook case of Hollywood taking a property and totally destroying it, trying to mainstream it. And and they always do it with properties that weren't mainstream in the first place. It's like right. let's make it main let's make it mainstream. How do we do that? We have to destroy the one thing that people liked about it in the first place. Winner never works. And, I know. So, and you know what? I didn't know Paul Gleason was in this either. Oh, yeah. Don't say it like, yeah, everybody knows Paul Gleason is in Doc Savage. <laughs> I forgot. I, just <laughs> I was like, oh, man, Paul Gleason's in here. And he's kind of playing it straight. <laughs> there were two times where Holly uh, recognized somebody in the, in the film. Uh, oh, pardon me. The first one was obviously Paul Gleason. But then, hold on, and I got to look up. Uh, then, then the 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 character with the thick glasses. Uh, I forget if it's Rennie or Johnny. Uh, oh, because those two, yeah. those are two background characters that always kind of just blend for me for the series. But the geeky guy, the archaeologist Wait, slash geologist, what, wasn't slash that Ham? Whatever. No, no, ha Ham was the heavy chemist with the pig. No, that's that's no hmm, Ham that's was. Punk. Ham was the skinny. No, Ham was the, the guy with the glasses, isn't it? No, that's the guy with the pin sense. The he's the lawyer. I'm talking about the 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 archaeologist guy. Then it's uh, Johnny. Right, Johnny. So Johnny's coming on, and I, I don't recognize the actor. And Holly's like, I know that guy. I say really? The only other guy you know is the guy from Breakfast Club. You really know this guy? I say, yeah, I know. So I look hmm. it up, and then I'm like, oh, he played a bank teller on. Uh, 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 prairie, what? Little House on the Prairie. Little House on the Prairie. Yeah, and Holly's like, "Oh, that's where I know him. He's the banker. Yeah, yeah." Like, <laughs> Who did I marry? It's like you making that up. I I think you she serious, Clark. Yeah, I think she just watches the show because she likes to watch poor people suffer. I I, I don't think it has anything to do with the writing. <laughs> um, I'm I'm kidding. She's actually she she read the story, the books as a kid, so she loves the show. And I was like, of course, that's what you recognize. But, oh no! She also recognized the 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 hairless guy that can't sweat from the hills have eyes. Uh, what did you ever look at his hands? Uh, n not intentionally. There, it, it almost looks like the tips of his fingers were cut off. Probably from whatever illness causes him not to sweat. I guess, yeah, you, you yeah, know, course, he can't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then, and then uh, the other bald guy is actually he was a stunt man, and he he's been in a bunch of things. The other guy that was uh, one of the henchmen. Oh, yeah. He came out with the sweater. I, I, first thing I said was, I swear, that's his shirt. He brings it to every movie. <laughs> every film I've seen him in, I swear to God, he's wearing horizontal stripes. <laughs> I would put money on it. That's uh, his wardrobe. He shows up the set and says, I'm wearing this. And wardrobe doesn't complain. They don't complain. Because you get well, punched right in the mouth. What I like is is uh, when Doc Savage first came out, she's like, "Who is this guy?" I was like, "I have no idea." It's Ron Eli, whatever the fuck he was in. He's Tarzan. <laughs> yeah, it's like literally, literally. Yeah, there's no reason you should know who that is. Don't worry. He's the no. He's the star of the film. Yeah. Well, you know what's funny? Um, last year, well, actually, it's 2019, but it when, is, what? it is uh, not two years, but it's it's like a year year and a half ago, something like that. His son murdered his mother, or the the. His 30-year-old son, Cameron Eli, or something along those lines, murdered, stabbed his mother to death. Uh-huh. I guess it was 
the, uh, what is uh, Ron Eli's ex-wife or something. Okay. She was 62 years old and um, stabbed her to death. I'm like, Jesus, that's what this guy's going to end up being famous for. His son stabbing the son's mother to death. Oh, by the way, if I said if I had said to you, Ron Eli, said, oh, no, yeah, he was the co-pilot in South Pacific. The response would still be the same. Yeah, I don't know who the fuck he is. Yeah. I, who the never, hell watched South Pacific? I've never seen him before, you know, doing some homework for this. I saw that he did Tarzan so, beforehand. So you, so, you know, going into the film uh, that it's going to be great when the most recognizable actors are one of the sidekicks and goon number two yeah. <laughs> and the mortician. Yeah, that's never a good thing. All right, so anybody who's never uh, seen, uh, heard of Doc Savage before, like Polly, uh, when we watched this at all, it was a 1930s uh, pulp series, uh, advent- men's adventure novels about this superhuman uh, man, Doc Savage, like the idyllic uh, Adonis, uh, superhuman genius, just great at everything ever, period. Well, and uh, and they go through great lengths to uh, show you that in this movie. Well, as they do in the books, repeatedly. It's an ongoing thing. It's not just that's just, There's a lot of parts in the movie that seem stupid until you point out. Actually, that's faithful to the source material. <laughs> but that was also uh, like you know cringy. It was just like oh no, it is. Like yeah. when he pulls the bullet out of the wall as his shirt rips to reveal his rippling yeah. muscles, and he's like, oh yes, it's uh, 1.5 grams. It's like what? <laughs> Holly, the first thing she said is, "Stop! It's drywall. Cut it out." <laughs> It was actually probably plaster, but <laughs> <laughs> it was still funny. It's still funny. <laughs> um, yeah, and he's actually been the archetype that sev- that most of these men's adventures uh, heroes has been taken from. He's like you know the, the one of the big ones. So, and again, Fortress of Solitude, which I didn't do the research, but I'm pretty sure Superman comics ripped it off of Doc Savage. <sighs> well, when were when did the first Doc Savage serial come out? On the 30s, I can give you an exact because you know uh, Action Comics number one, which featured Superman, and it might not have mentioned the Fortress of Solitude in that issue. I don't exactly know. Came out in what 1934, I think. Uh, March 1933. And that's for Doc Savage. Doc Savage. Correct. And Action Comics number one. I thought you were looking that up. I don't oh, know that God. shit. But I just I just worked at a comic store. I didn't pay attention. <laughs> That's your job. So, June, but, like, oh, June 1938. So, you, you know what? It Superman absolutely ripped off Fortress of Solitude because yeah, there's I, mean, I don't even even if it was mentioned in Action Comics number 1, mm-hmm. Fortress of Solitude had 5 years to be mentioned in Doc Savage beforehand, which you know it was. So. No, the Fortress of Solitude's been in there since the early episode issues. But that's what I'm um, saying. Doc Savage. Yeah, that, yeah. That's so, what I'm saying. Right, yeah. Uh, um, yeah, it was funny because I'm explaining this to Holly, too. It says, yeah, you know, it's just like the superhero type character before Superman, but it's like, you know, it's just like a really, it's like, you know, the, the Ubermensch. The first action comic She's, book she's part hero. German. She knows what Ubermensch means. Ubermensch? And, uh, so, so later we're watching the boat sequence, and there's a scene where a guy shoots a, t- uh, a, a Tommy gun at Doc, and like he just hits his chest and it's all black marks. Boom, 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 boom. And, and Holly asked, in, in all seriousness, it's like, so is that a bulletproof vest or is he just that awesome? And you know what's funny? Because <laughs> I thought hey, the was, same. I thought the same thing. It was because, a question. I was like, no, dear, but good point. <laughs> because the next scene just shows him taking off the jacket uh, because he jumps in the, into the water and he obviously he has like an oxygen tank that he puts in his mouth so he can breathe underwater. He's Where taking. Where would you put it? Well, it's it's like it's at his waist. <clears throat> Excuse me. But the thing is, as he's taking off the jacket, there's no bulletproof vest in there. It's part of the jacket. It's probably he probably invented this. He's that's the thing. That's why they make a a, a point of uh, in this time period when they do have fire extinguishers <coughs> and there's a fighter in his office. He's like, quick, get the 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 what did he? I forget what he called him. Like the the no flame balls. It was and the extinguisher it, balls. Extinguisher balls. So instead of a factual fire extinguisher, they throw snowballs at it, and it, it's it's the it's this thing. They go out of the way every book. Just like yeah, he invented this, and like he has this, and that's why the the and the windows actual thing from the books. It's built a certain way so that everybody looks like they're actually five inches to the left and where they actually are. 
<laughs> and by the way, that's not in the first book, because in the first book, somebody takes a snipe at him and almost hits him. Oh, yeah? I forget if it's in the... Yeah. I, or no, actually, the second book that happened, so it definitely wasn't the first book. I you know, just started reading them, and I read the first and second book. So that's right now, that I'm really strong on those two. At the uh, the end of the film, and you have a slide of it, um, where it says, "And look for Doc Savage in the next, uh, ser- you know, the next movie." The what is it? The Arch Enemy of Evil. Yeah, or something. I don't along think they were actually naming the movie like like uh, Hitler on Ice. I think it was just like he is the Arch Enemy of Evil. No, no, no. It basically said in. It, it, I didn't see the in part. You sure? Well, I have the I, slide. I, let me I'm just look. Sure let me look up the slide real quick. But uh, the thing is, I'm assuming they thought this was going to be more successful. They always assume. And well, it also explained why Doc has his name on everything. And that was the thing that annoyed the shit out of me because he has a, he has his belt buckle. Every vehicle he drives has his name. Now, the, the shape of his name that is the actual book cover uh, logo, Doc Savage. That's how it looked on the cover of all the books, the magazines, etc. Okay. So they just took his logo and said, okay, obviously this man who who is dedicating his life to furthering good and fighting uh, injustice and evil uh, and is altruistic in every shape and form, obviously he's got to be about making sure he has his uh, image out there. Got you know, it. Obviously he's networking and he's going to make sure he's, he's probably incorporated too. It's like, <laughs> really? He's going to have an actual logo like that he has on everything and shows off because he's a modest man. So the slide says, watch for Doc Savage's next thrilling adventure, the arch enemy of evil. So to me, that sounds like it's that's been named. I've heard it both ways. So, you know, just like this one is called Doc Savage, the man of bronze. I assume the next film would have been called Doc Savage. Uh, the arch, arch enemy, enemy of enemy. evil. Okay, all right, I'll give that one to you. That makes more sense. So, all right. Yeah, I'll even put it on the screen for everyone. There it I is. I read a headline somewhere that they're they're pushing this idea of Doc Savage in space, which means they still haven't gotten the fucking point. <laughs> the man does study the stars in the universe, though. Well, yeah, and he also uses rockets to catch fish. So that's so fucking ridiculous. Now, um. I want to point out another thing. Uh, that, I mean, it's not too much to go through the basic plot. Like I said, he's a super guy who, who fights good and injustice, and he, he races home from the Force of Solitude to meet the Fabulous Five, his cohorts uh, in crime, all of whom are experts in their own field, and all of who all of them can uh, kick ass in a fight. That's from the books, too. Okay. And Because he sensed, their, he sensed their thoughts. Pretty sure that's not from the books. And he fi- and he finds out his father has been killed in South America, and I, I love when they cut to the portrait of-, of his father, and it's literally him with a mustache. <laughs> I was like, N- they weren't even like even from Photoshop standards, this is lazy as shit. <laughs> what I-, I I included a screenshot just of that because how do you how do you ignore that? I don't I don't see the resemblance. I mean. <laughs> Your uncle? Uh, yeah. Uh, and so that leads them on to an adventure to South America. Uh, there's poisonous uh, ghost snakes, uh, um, a Mexican in a yeah, crib. I, I just put the slide on the screen just because we were just talking about it. Instead of waiting for it to come around again in the show, in and, the slideshow. And, and this story is actually the first book or the first adventure of Doc Savage. It is true to the source origin in as much as... He tries to track down his father's death in South America, and that's where he meets this tribe that has unlimited resources of gold. Yeah, and he, uh, you know, here spoiler alert: uh, at the end of the film, it's funny because they said it belonged to his father, and says now it belongs to you, Doc Savage. And he basically, instead of, and I'm kind of thinking maybe he's like, the land belongs to you, thank you, but no, thank you. And he's like, thank you, with this amount of wealth. <laughs> <laughs> that I've uh, now attained. Said. That's what Holly said. <laughs> she said the exact same thing, and I was like, "No, no, he it funds his operations to make the world a better place." She's like, "Yeah, but it's not his. She, he shouldn't just take him the land." He's like, "Well, he did. not He's not moving in." We we had a discussion about this. Just we, you and I probably would have the same discussion. <laughs> He's like, "With this, with this kind of wealth, I can continue my studies and you know now, the preservation of the of mankind." 
Now the villain, the guy with the with the uh, uh, rhinestone studded jacket and yeah. the bad teeth, he uh, you know I don't know why the long face. He uh, <laughs> killed Doc Savage's father, and he is convinced, uh, like the second in command of the tribe, the the elders' uh, pimp son. Um, he, he, like I guess he would be the eight ball from Breaking Bad. Yeah, yeah. No? sure. Okay. Um, Why not? I, I'm, I, he's uh, he's wearing a white suit. I'm going with it. And uh, so he's tricked them somehow into giving him the rights instead of Doc Savage, or he's done so because he killed Doc Savage's father. And he's trying to prevent this. And at one point, uh, now when when Doc Savage's guys get there and are immediately taken captive, I love what he says. So, you have found, you have discovered, the pool of gold. <laughs> and I was like, that's what we're calling it. <laughs> you couldn't. You, that's the best name, pool of gold. That that that's your big enigmatic. It couldn't have been something like you know the the fountain of fortune or say anything. But well, the, hell, the call it the foundry of gold, or I mean, like, call it something else. Anything but yeah, the pool of gold, yeah, the mol- the molten gold over there, yeah, that that pool of gold, I, yeah, I don't know why you're talking, yeah, like when you say it like that, you're supposed to like give it the name, right? Like, oh, yeah, another swing and a miss, but <laughs> but um, the whole weird thing about it was, he, at one point he's arguing with the guy and he's like, you you know, remove your father from from command, you have to take control, do what I say. Don't you want to be rich? I'm going to make you rich. And I'm thinking, typical white man. He's like, yeah, give me the pool of gold, and I'll I'll make all your dreams come true. It's like, yeah, you know what most people's number one's dream is, is a pool of gold. What the fuck? How did he pull this off? <laughs> they never go into detail. I'm like, what did he tell them they can get that's more, that's more valuable than a pool of gold? <laughs> I want to hear more about this plan. He, uh... I mean, they they don't need money, <laughs> it's and, just... and they have a pool. Of, it's like, what wealth do you talk? Uh, you know, uh, there. Uh, you know, you're waiting for the other guy to go. Wait a minute, I've got a pool of gold. <laughs> <laughs> what do I need you for? Uh, typical white man. However, he got himself into that. Uh, if you tried to explain it on film, nothing they would have given you would make sense. But knowing reality, I believe it. Well, sure. Yeah. <laughs> it's just that fucking crazy. <laughs> oh, my God. Now, another thing that you might have noticed mm-hmm. in the movie was uh, every so often they'll focus on, on Doc Savage and you'd hear this weird trilling in the background. Um, yeah. <laughs> that was like his spidey sense. Well... In the books, well, because oh, you know what? Because when he's in the Fortress of Solitude, it happens, and yeah. he and he comes to them, and he's just like, "Yeah, I." Uh, what, what did he say? He was like, "I, I felt your." I felt I felt your minds, basically. Or yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Which and again, I don't remember that from the books. But uh, what? Bad, and again, this is bad translation of of a uh, the source material. In the books, they would describe, and it's easier to describe this than show it. I, I guarantee it's a hard, you know, it, it's really something hard. That they should have forgiven, they should have just like ex- dropped it, to be honest, right. for the film. Oh, if yeah. they make a new one, they got to drop it because unless they unless they take the time to explain it. I think Shane Black is involved. Oh, he'll do it right. I'm not, no worries. But in the books, what it is is he he does this whistling thing whenever he's in deep thought, like something was clicking, and it's he makes the noise. But it always the book always goes through great expenses expand, uh, extent to say if you were watching Doc Savage intently and focusing on his lips you wouldn't have seen any movement and wouldn't have even thought the noise was coming from him. That's how un sub, that's like how unconscious he is of making this. But every time you heard the noise, you knew he was onto something. So they botch it, and now but they, they botch it and then keep it through the whole film. It like it happens like four times. Yeah. And it's just one of those maddening things. Like, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. And that's me knowing the source material. Polly's just like, what the fuck is that? It's like, don't even worry about it. I, I can't even explain it to you right now. Just. <laughs> I feel like I've been dominating some of the time here, sir. What do you, what do you, what do you, what, what, what no, else do you want to focus it, on? It, it's okay. <laughs> no, no, seriously. You watch this film. You see I did, I did watch this film. Um, well, <sighs> Again, never read any of the serials, never seen the movie before. 
I knew right. of Which, I knew of it. I knew of it. Right, and you and, have to imagine, uh, not to cut you off, but you have to imagine that the majority of the audience that saw this when it came out in the same position. Oh yeah, oh, so absolutely. This, so you are the general audience. I am the weird offshoot they weren't even trying to like appeal to. Yeah, there, so, there's so, so there's what so. You think makes more sense. Well, there's so much in this movie that doesn't work, uh, mainly because of how poorly executed it, it's been done. Um, it, like when he gets his ragtag guys, his fabulous five, and they're all uh-huh. together, and there's the scene in the movie where the lawyer and the engineer are like, "Listen, we're not gonna, we're not gonna go on this trip with you," and the one guy says, "I don't think you'll have a need for a lawyer," and I'm like, "You're right." You're right. <laughs> you shouldn't go. <laughs> but you turn out to be wrong because they needed the lawyer because they were dealing with land rights. <sighs> yeah, and and that <laughs> it's obviously it's like come on. You you telling me that every goddamn mission that they go on they need every one of these guys in some way? Stop. All right. So whether you're like me, someone who's familiar with the source material and knows what they're trying to adapt, or you Someone who's never, or Holly, you or Holly, someone who's never seen the films, never really read any of this stuff, or even Holly more removed from you. Everyone should have the same reaction when they see the the small Mexican guy in the giant crib. <laughs> the fucking, and he's sucking on his thumb, and then they got the yeah. music. Da, 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 da. Well, not, not as bad as when they played La Cucaracha for him. This is a very racist film. Oh my god! When he goes, when Doc Savage goes in, and the secretary is eating tacos, yeah, I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck? And I'm like, really? Dude, That's her lunch. She's I, eating tacos. All right, I, I'm racist because you know I never, I didn't even click. That didn't even click with me until you just mentioned it. Oh really? <laughs> <laughs> it's the first thing I noticed. I'm like, why? Is she having tacos right now? <laughs> <laughs> While typing, the most inopportune time to eat a finger food like that. <laughs> a tortilla, maybe. Uh, yeah, fucking... A burrito would make much more sense. It's yeah, right? It's, it's Sure. It's fucking Taco <laughs> but, Tuesday. Uh, but I, remember, I remember the scene. They, they cut to the scene where the guy's in the, the crib and there's like just dead silence. My wife says, what about that? It's like, I got nothing. <laughs> there's, there's nothing to explain that that's just there I mean don't get me wrong I was just talking about this the other day I was actually talking about this with my boss and the, she was eating tacos the, <laughs> the mention of Jim Cotta I brought up Jim Cotta I, I brought up that you know pre-COVID and especially when you were living in New Jersey mm-hmm. we would get together two three times a year and we would sh- we'd have bad movie day Mm-hmm. You know, and we would show bad movies, and I was telling him all about it, and I was telling him all about the one year we showed Tron, and the, and the year we showed Jim Cotta, and I was telling him that I had to watch this movie, and I was like, it's like this movie here. It's a surprise to me that we have never reviewed this film before. Um, this would be a perfect bad movie day like an outdoor movie to oh, force sure. everyone to watch this would be perfect yeah holly was surprised that this has never been like on mst 3k or rip tracks right i know like, no, no, this is just hanging out there this is this is just gold through and through like there's a picture of the maid where she shoes away the other two maids for hey, you know yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, oh. uh, well, it just, it's, it's Doc Savage. That's why the secretary meets him. And the next day he's like, I love you. I, <laughs> baby, you're a brick. <laughs> I got to tell you, though, he's got the best. He's got the best line ever for avoiding, uh, you know, any kind of uh, connections or ties. So, hey, you know, I live a dangerous life. I don't want to get you. In, I don't want to, you know, risk your life. I, 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 I have to be divorced from any kind of. Uh, relationships like that so i'll just plow you later and that'll be the end of it <laughs> you know it's just it's, can't put you through it can't do it no uh, also the the, the rip shirts the rip shirts like there's the okay. shot of him going swimming with the the t it's like why yeah, is that even why is he even wearing that i i specifically have one screenshot just because there's a nipple shot of his yes i figured you can use that for the <laughs> for the youtube 
picture. <laughs> uh, but yeah, yeah, the um, uh, the rip shirt is a thing where that's from the cover of the magazines and the books. Uh, every cover, he's got a rip shirt because you know he's an adventurer. Right. So, so like the like the, I remember the beginning of the film. He's like, oh, wait, what his shirt's ripped already? It's like, no, it's a thing. It's it's a thing. Let it go. <laughs> <laughs> he has to rip the shirt at least twice. Come on. <laughs> It's on the it's on the movie movie poster. It's right on the poster. And it's just like the covers. I mean, that's just the thing. You yep. Ah, uh, I think it's the only reason they had him scale down that elevator shaft. Is there's a reason to rip it up. <laughs> so if if the Rock ends up playing Doc Savage, do, you, do they give him hair? They kind of have to, right? Ah, uh, they might if, if they're if they're gonna if they're trying to stick truer to the source material. Um, as, as you get further in, actually, um, a lot of the later covers, he wears this gold uh, bronze uh, cap. skull cap. Skull cap, yeah. And when he's not wearing it, he has like a buzz cut with the widow's peak right in the center, so the skull cap covers it. Oh, so they could so probably they, get away with him just being bald. They probably could, yeah. And, and I, I could see him rocking the skull cap, definitely. Okay. It's ridiculous. <laughs> there's, there's just so much it, it just this is this is one of those films and i i've been wanting to do it forever we've been wanting to do it forever and you know what I, this is this is the year we're going to do it we're going to do some some new things with the show i want to do a bad movie day a virtual bad movie day have the movie online invite people into the chat room have them watch it with us you know it just this one well no or well, just, just, just bad saying movie bad movies in general i mean we okay. could show this one again um, what was that movie that we we tested? The one with uh, shit with um. Oh, Deathstalker or um, not Deathstalker? One... But that's the one that you're, you're thinking of. It's the Hawk. one with uh, Hawk, uh, Hawk, Hawk the Slayer with Jack Palance with the sword that holds the stone. Yes. Yeah. This is how long ago. This is how long ago we did that test screening, which, by the way, as we were watching it and making commentary for it. Um, was going amazing. Like we had so many good lines while we were watching it. Well, we're we're awesome. that that was ten years ago. And you know well, how I know this because Danny, at one point in that that little uh, that test footage that we were doing, was crying so much I had to end it because Mary Ellen was getting overwhelmed because she was handling him all by herself. Because ah. uh, we were only doing a test. I was like Scott, I gotta go. I gotta help Mary. So the only reason you realize it's that old is because you're a bad husband. Uh, or a bad father. No, I say husband at that point. A husband? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I was doing this and I was hanging out with you instead of helping. <laughs> hey, I appreciate it. It, it was scheduled. This was it was a scheduled test, so I don't want to hear any complaints from uh, <laughs> from from the little lady. No, I'm up for that too, and I actually, I actually want to hold a live uh, bad movie day here for my new Texas friends. Yeah. Uh, get them involved. Um, now, so again, I mean, I, I said so much about it in the beginning of the episode. I don't want to repeat myself, but uh, this is a bad movie that really is indicative of the whole idea of trying to uh, monetize a franchise uh, with this original source material that's outdated and has a niche audience and trying to change it for mainstream and in doing so destroying anything that originally. And I think as we're most also the budget, because, again, I wasn't joking earlier, the entire soundtrack is John Philip Sousa marching music, but with lyrics basically along the lines of Doc Savage, Doc Savage. Yeah, it's like, yeah. Uh, no, you're right. And it's like, uh, what's the one line? What does he have? It's uh, do not fear. Doc Savage is here. Yeah. It's like Doc Savage, do Doc not fear. He's that, got a he's bumper so sticker that says it. He has the bumper sticker that says that. Yep. You think he'd have, but you know, you really want that on the front because you don't want people to see the Azure leaving yeah, right it's like, but where are you going then no you want that on the front of the car yeah, or put one in the I, front and the back no because in the back he's leaving so do, to have no fear Doc Savage is rapidly driving <laughs> away <laughs> yeah <laughs> that doesn't instill faith and confidence uh, that's yeah that's true yeah but I mean this is there, there's so much to hate <laughs> <laughs> there, there's no. so much. I mean, uh, honestly, the only charming thing about it is what they were trying to do, and failed. 
uh, it, it's it's the the nostalgia is the only thing that really makes this film worth watching. If you know Doc Savage, if you you know if yeah, you're familiar it, with the character or with it, the series or with any aspect of it, yeah. And like that, I said, that, the the only thing I had going into this is that I just I knew of Doc Savage and that it was a serial, uh, you know, back in the 30s. That's all now, I knew. I never I never read anything and I've never seen this film. Speaking of better examples, what would you say is worse, Doc Savage or Dick Tracy? The 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 Dick Tracy from from 1990. What other one is there? Did they do a black and white? No, they never did, right? As far as I know, no. They had serials. No, this is worse than Dick Tracy. Okay. What really? Yeah. If oh. you had a choice to watch this again or Dick Tracy, you'd choose Dick Tracy. I would. Oh, I don't. I don't. I, I. I don't. I think we're on different sides of the fence on this one, sir. Oh yeah. no, no. I mean, at least, at least, you get a really whacked out kind of cool performance by Pacino. Uh, under all that crazy ass makeup. No, I would watch Dick Tracy ten times before I'd watch this again. Wow, that's not. That's not good. That's not good. No. So, um, uh, how? What would you rate Doc Savage, the Man of Bronze, out of the? Uh, uh, out of one out of ten out of ten are we at the point where we're reviewing or like rating this unless i've glossed over some other aspect of the movie you wanted to draw i i i have another one i want to mention real quick is there anything else you want to no <laughs> no the one thing, i didn't notice until the second time around uh when i was doing screenshots there's one part where doc savage is trying to figure out the secret way to the uh to the this uh this hidden village besides you know just getting a really long rope yeah. Because it's down this chasm, but well, yeah, they look down into it, and he goes, uh, uh, "What did he say?" That's uh, oh, what they say it in the trailer. But he's like, "And there's no way down." <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, the edge of the world, or edge of the world, it's, it's yeah, edge of the world, yeah. But but there's but it's only a ravine, so there's more world on the other side. So it's not really the edge of the world; no. it's a crack in the world. It's just, but, it, it but, looked but, like a you know, river, to be honest. You know, it, it's it's legend. You, you don't fuck with legend. No, you know, semantic. But so Doc Savage notices something on one of the, or uh, actually Rennie notices something. Something Tommy notices something. The names all blend together except for Monk and Ham. I'm sorry, I've never been able to remember who's who. <laughs> uh, they find a rock, and Doc uses a little secret glass, and exposes that his father left him a message on how to get down, oh, and yeah. it's Morse code. And it didn't click the first time, but the second time he looks at this Morse code and he says, ah, it's laka trempa, laka la blah, blah, It's this uh, rare plant that only grows in uh, Egypt or something. And I said, wait a minute. If you look at that Morse code, there's maybe six, seven letters there tops. <laughs> Once you got the liker, like, you're done. The message is, that is not what he wrote. Yeah, it he, should... wrote look, he wrote, like, look down or don't jump, something like that. <laughs> definitely wasn't like the, the genius genus and uh phylum of a of a plant species what was your other example what your other uh, another film did you say Original? you were well because yeah, it was dick tracy it was, it was dick, dick tracy. tracy okay yeah how'd you miss that no i thought you were mentioning another one other than dick tracy i thought you were going to go into another film no, I'm sure I could find more. I mean, I'm sure again, Holly, you could. Hollywood does this over and over and over again. That's why I also wanted to specify that I feel like this is a, an example of a bad Hollywood film. If this was a re- truly like low budget movie, and they went like the camp style, there's a different uh, there's a different level for that, and that you could forgive more for that. It's like we have nothing to work with here. Let's just have fun. This is this is stylized camp that falls up flat right so yeah that's, that's why that's the only reason i specified hollywood in the beginning i wasn't correcting you okay. i just i just felt no, like no, no, that's fine it. that's fine um, all right so uh if i'm giving if i'm rating this uh out of 10 right now imdb is at 5.6 right and only, only 1700 only reviews people. well i mean that's probably about as many people that has ever seen it as i'm saying yeah um i i think 5.6 is high I think less than five would do would not do it justice. I would go with a solid five on this. I was thinking the same thing. This is like this isn't your standard run of the mill, good idea, bad production, or bad uh, follow through. Yeah, it's uh, 
forget landing forget sticking the land they didn't even make it over the parallel bars you know they're just right they went right into the crowd yeah it's probably almost a six for nostalgia alone but then the, i would also knock off a star for john philip souza <laughs> you'd take it all the way down to a four just be, no, uh, no, no. I, I, I oh, you meaning like from a six. six to a five? Gotcha. Six back to a five because of that. Six to me is almost is almost that it's good. I, that's why I think five is correct. I think five is 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 a good. Yeah, I'm not even looking at the demographics. Everybody watches movies either too young or too old. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know which one I am. So, well, now we're at the point of what I'm challenging you correct now now we're onto your turn and i think we still have quite a few movies in 1975 oh we have a ton we're we're just you know i I know i know i know everyone's thinking of it thinking it we're not getting out of 1975 (laughs) because the the way again the way this works um because listening to episodes should be seamless no matter how far apart they are the way this works is we started in 1973 scott's uh he started uh, in 1973 with his challenge and the way it works is the challenge was to me and at that point I have a choice of staying in the year 1973 and challenging Scott another film in that year or I have the option to if I felt we were done with 1973 challenge him a film in 1974 right. so just to give you an idea we've been in 19 the 1970s for months that's how many movies there are so, yeah. I do not feel like we should get out of 1975. There's, there's definitely a, a minimum of one or two that I feel like we have to review before we get out. Well, of here's year. the thing. This is what's coming into play as far as what I'm challenging you. Now, I have the movie that I've picked. Okay, I have the movie that I've picked. But the thing is, um, we have an opportunity to review some good films as well. Oh, that's the, boring. Well, I mean, like, but I'm not just talking about um, good films. I, I'm thinking more along the lines of important films. You know, it's like we would do that with our old format. It would be like, you know what? We should review this because yeah, that's, what, that's what Oscar time is for. Well, not all the Oscar films are good, but I understand what you mean with that. <laughs> and I agree. Um, so... All right, but what I'm getting at is we had there are films like Jaws and there are films like Dog Day Afternoon and they came out in 1975 and they are considered, you know, good films, Oscar caliber films. That's not what I'm challenging you to, but I'm saying we may want to consider going down that avenue because so you mean what? So you mean stuff better than Super Vixens? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but what I'm getting at is we are steadily approaching. The the now we're in this you know, mid seventies. We're steadily approaching, in my opinion, when Hollywood really took a turn. I mean, you got some real shit in the eighties, but you they took a turn for making much better films. Um, oh know, yeah, there's uh, a, there's an increase in quality in the eighties and nineties, definitely. Yeah, so we're we're heading into that is what I'm getting at. It's like. Do we do a film like Dog Day Afternoon, or do we just kind of leave it to the wayside? Doesn't Uh, always have to be shitty movies. It's like, do we want to explore Dog Day Afternoon because because of the type of film that it is, because it's so good? Do we find faults with it? You know, do do we review that a different way, or do we just kind of, you know, just like oodle over it because it's so good? Are you challenging me to Salo? Please don't challenge me to Salo. Oh, I'm not challenging you to that. <laughs> at least not at least not this week. <laughs> um, I actually was going to challenge you to um, Dark Star, but I realized that was a missed opportunity because it came out in America in 1974 and 1975. So it was released in 1974, limited, and then it was released in 1975, I believe, in a wider range. But because it was released in 74, we're out of 74. Because I was like, oh, you know, Dark Star would have kind of been neat because it's, it's space and it's campy and it's Carpenter. You know, it was the first thing he ever did. 
but I can't do it because it's the wrong year. Mm -hmm. But I'm going with the next best thing. No, what? I'm going with Ilza. She wolf of the SS. Oh. No. That was a bait and switch. Yeah, it was. I'm not even going to have you guess it. I'm just going to tell you what it is. Uh, so that came out in 75? I don't think it I did. have that. It came out October of 75. I don't think I have it either. Hey, you know what? I believe it's a I, favorite of honest. Rob Zombie. I, I owned all the Ilza films at one point during my VHS videotape uh, collecting days. And I'll, I'll be honest, I never watched any of them. <laughs> that was one of the reasons I stopped. It was that in the cannibal films. I just remember one day going through my collections like, I have every cannibal film ever made. I don't want to watch any of these. What am I doing? <laughs> um, I never had, I've never seen this movie either. Um, I've seen a few cannibal films and I, and I watched it because it's like, I like horror. I'm, oh, I'm, su few, I'm supposed, I've supposed to watch yeah. this. I'm supposed to watch this, but it's like, and I'm not really kind of digging it. Yeah. It's like, it's like make them die slowly. Yeah, I, I'm okay with reading. I've read about it. I've seen the pictures. I, I don't need. I, I'm sure I don't need to experience this in the flesh to actually like know what I'm talking about. Well, you know what's funny? Uh, now that you bring that one up, when I was a kid and I'd go into the mom and pop video store, it was uh, Palmer Video on Belleville Ave in Belleville, uh -huh. uh, New Jersey. I'd go in there uh, with my father, and they would always have those boxes, like Let Them Die Slowly and. Um, you know, uh, zombie and all that. It was the the really big display boxes. Do you remember mm -hmm. those? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and they opened up like a like a book, and the VHS tape was inside. Yeah, I have my Death Wish four and my um, Die Laughing ones of that size. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, but and and the let them die slowly and movies like that always had like that red star or yellow star sticker or was part of the artwork that said banned in 37 countries oh definitely you know, cannibal for rocks yeah you know I mean, like was, banned in 57 favorite. countries that always drew me to it it's like i need to see this because mm. i'm told that i shouldn't well we're, we're from the faces of death generation yep uh, oh we yeah were the prime we were the prime market for for those films when they came out yeah i mean i watched even, the first couple even Faces of Death is the same thing. Banned in you know, X amount of countries. Yeah. How I'm do I not watch this? I'm going to see if I can find the old box. Clickety, clickety, click. Clickety, clickety, click. Yeah, I, I do not have a copy of Ilza, uh, which is on purpose. And, and uh, I don't know if I'll keep it when I'm done watching. <laughs> oh, make them uh, die slowly, not let them die slowly. No, yes, yeah, make them die slowly, also known as Cannibal for Rocks. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a yellow sticker, so I was right. I, my memory was either red or yellow, but it's yellow with red lettering, so I got kind of both. Banned in 31 countries. Warning. Make them die slowly. I, I even feel like I remember on the back of the cover, it showed like the one chick with the spike coming out of her mouth. Um, Let's see. Do they... Not not the whole thing, because she was naked, but no, I, no, I, no. Feel like, I feel like the back cover showed that. See, I mean, I'm... obviously, it was in books and magazines I read, too, but... Yeah, I'm trying to see if they have a if they're showing the back anywhere. They got it. they don't have the back cover. They're fools, fools and charlatans. <laughs> well, a lot of times they'll have um, it fanned out where you see the front and the back side to side, and they're not showing it. What the fuck? All right, I I I, I can guarantee that you sucks. that if you're gonna make me watch Ilza, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm probably gonna have to watch this with Holly, so well, that'll yeah. be fun. Um, but if you're gonna do that, you're definitely getting an Argento hit t next week. Uh, any Argento in 75? Yeah, Deep Red. Oh, yeah, I did see that. I was thinking about challenging that to you. Yeah, and I'll make sure that you have the, the uncut version. The, uh, yes, of course. Yeah. Uh, uh, I guess anyway. we're far away. It, funny to think at one point I was, think of, uh, I was thinking of um, challenging you to the strongest man in the world. <laughs> or Escape to Witch Mountain. Like, you know, it's a Disney film. Now we're, now we're on fucking Ilza. See, you did this. I it's did. You. I'm sorry. You did this. Yeah, I'm not sorry. Not sorry. How's that? <laughs> Bastard. There's no back cover anywhere. What the balls? Uh, we'll just have to get a copy of it. That's not cool. Not well, when I do um, the slideshow, don't worry. I'm gonna get as many 
posters as I can. Bad. We're not doing that film. We're doing Ilza. Well, oh yeah. When did Make Them Die Slowly come out? I don't remember. I, have to, I feel like it's 81. But, it's, uh, oh, we got a way to go before we do that. Hang on. Let's make them. I'm pretty sure I have a copy of it. Except I probably have it under Cannibal for Rocks. Yeah, Cannibal for Rocks. I was right. 1981. 81? Okay. Yeah. Well, we'll get there before you know it. We'll get there before you know it. So that's your challenge, sir. Oh, you bastard. Tingling. Was, uh... I love that. There's that snapshot of him tingling. <laughs> <laughs> that's the, that's what we were talking about before. It's like, I've, my, I've read your mind. My favorite screenshot is the, near the end when Doc Savage uh, dresses up as a goon and sneaks up on the bad guy. And he grabs him and takes him over to the front of the cave. And it, he holds him down by his neck. And he points, but like with his hand, like pointing up. Right. And it's like, it's just, it's like the per. It was just, it's so fucking thirties. Like I could see the, I could see it as a cover, and it's also at the same time so ludicrous. What? Yeah. Just the positioning of the hand is what? What hero, in the middle of taking over the bad guy, points like a maitre d? What is it? And this is the creme de flage. <laughs> what, what is that? Hor- horrible, and. And delightful at the same time. I can't even. But it's my favorite one. Oh, very good, sir. <laughs> <laughs> how how long how long has the show been going? Um, we're at, a little shorter than last week. We're an hour and twelve minutes. Wow, we're getting better. I mean, a solid hour, I think, is more than anybody should be expecting. For to take. Doc Savage, yeah. I, I yeah, I think anything except the double feature, we shouldn't be. We sh- we should stop. Yeah, unless we're like bring the point. <laughs> Uh, unless we're like so in the groove, you know, there's no oh, yeah. reason to go for more than an hour, hour fifteen. Oh yeah, those are the best shows. They happen. They have, yeah. Yeah, I think if if you I don't if think you Ilsa look at it, be one of those shows. Uh, no, if you look at our entire resume of episodes, because this is episode three hundred and twenty-seven, um, and if you took the average length of every show, we are a ninety-minute show. That is our mm-hmm. average runtime is ninety minutes. Oh yeah, because we got also, we got shows that are two hours, two and a half hours, but most of them, our average, it's ninety minutes. And I'm willing to take partial blame for that. Yeah, like you said that you were talking quite a bit during this episode. You were. I apologize. And and, and it's not your fault because I was allowing it to happen. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm like I'm just gonna you let did him. This. I'm I'm gonna let him run. I'm gonna let him go. Because I don't have that much to say about fucking Doc Savage. Yeah, you know, and I, I kind of knew that too. I, that's why I, I felt like I was coming in as, like a heavy hitter. It's like I got, I got the, I'm a, I'm an ex, I'm a pro at this, man. Yeah, Doc. Like, here's another thing for you. When they get on the car, yeah. and he stands on the running. Oh, board, he stands on the board. That was, I love that. That's, that's probably my favorite shot where he's like, his hand is pointed in that way. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. And I was just like, when he gets on there, I'm like, you know, I want to do that. You know, I bet that great. would be fun. What's great is, is they explain in the book that there's two reasons he does it. One is because he's more comfortable there. But two, that that tra- it always helps to slow down traffic because everybody stops to look at him because he's so awe-inspiring. <laughs> I'm not even joking. That's just, yeah. Really, if he had killed more people in this film, I, I wouldn't have had that bad of a reaction to it. But I, <laughs> after having just read the second book and in the first chapter, second chapter, he's like he kills five guys with his bare hands. I, 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 it was really harder for me to take the the G version. <laughs> it really was. Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah. So let's wrap up. Let's go ahead and end this shit. Guess what? Um, bumpers. I don't have them. Dude. <laughs> We're not. I'm working on them, but I am working on them. Do uh, hey uh, website. We don't have it. Good. <laughs> We're even. All right. Great. No. No complaints. It just and the thing is, I have to get it done before I start my next major upgrade because that will go on for four to six months, and I'm gonna have so much less time to do things like that. So, I have until March. We have until March to do audio, intros, bumpers, website. I'm, I'm with because you. as soon as March hits, I am not available. You want to pow on the weekend? Just let me know. I'll, I'll block out some time. Okay, that sounds like a plan. The, yeah. Even the spiel that I would go back and forth, you know, uh, at the end of the show, it's like, make sure to go to our website. I, I kind of vaguely remember what I used to say. 
Well, let's just start from scratch. I'll, I'll figure something out. You know, but uh, yeah. But we do have a website, and it will work as long as you just allow Flash Player to run it. You know, you just have to right-click in your browser and say allow. It will load up, and you can listen to the episodes on the website. Right. Um, we, you we, can go to iTunes. That still works perfectly. So go to iTunes and search for Movie Sucktastic. Any of our, all of our shows are there. But it's going to be streamlined, a lot more bare bones coming yeah. forward, to make it easier to act, access it. Yeah, and then of course, so um, of course, Facebook. Uh, we have a Facebook presence, and even you know things like Stitcher, and uh, Stitcher and Pandora, um, Google. Radio, is it Google Radio? Google Radio, iHeart Radio. The, the podcast is on all of those. I've submitted them all. They're all there. Mm-hmm. there. There are so many ways to listen to this show. It's not just iTunes. You literally just do a search for Movie Sucktastic in a web browser, and th- th- there is so many places. And and is, and YouTube, with our, our, uh, our, our episodes on there, people... They will link to our show because they it's like we talk about a film that they're reviewing themselves and they're like, hey, these guys said something that I am saying to you now. It's like that's happened a few times. There was one person that was writing, not a thesis, but they were writing an article about, uh, and I might be wrong with this, but I believe they were writing an article about domestic abuse and there was a movie that we reviewed that touched on that and they linked our show to it. So it wasn't the rape episode. It might have been that one. <laughs> it, actually, you know what? It, I don't know if that's the episode we want to be people writing about. <laughs> yeah, but it just... But, which, which, by the way, if I have any co-workers listening, please don't talk to HR. <laughs> it might have been that episode. So, <laughs> yeah. What? Well, hey, you know what? That was in the, sh- oh, in oh, the show's oh, infancy. Actually, you know what? It might have been uh, Paranormal Activity 1 or 2. Oh, because of the domestic abuse? Yeah, because I had that whole thing about the first two being like a casebook example of domestic uh, domestic abuse. I, I don't... I, abuse of a, a husband. I know it was something serious. It wasn't written for comedic effect, and they linked our show to it. You know, uh, I haven't Googled our show in like ages. I'm going to so do no. it after we're done, because you're right. I haven't done it either. And I did go and check our statistics. I'm going to bing it. You're gonna bing it. I was. I did check our statistics for like downloads uh, for podcasts and whatnot. And there's the music done. The totally talk past the music again. Um, we're still doing this, pretty good. Uh, while uh, we're still doing really well as far as uh, downloads, listens how, to the how show. How come all the images come up blurred for adult content? <laughs> it shouldn't. And I, safe, and I have safe search off. I don't understand what's going on here. <laughs> All right, I'm going to end the show. Scott, myself, we're out of here. Thank you for listening. We'll talk to you next week. Bye-bye. Bye.